Jay Leno says, finally, a motivational speaker without the speech. Ross Schaefer is one of the funniest guys I know. Well, he uh, he brings me coffee every morning, wakes me up with a cup of coffee. He sends me flowers for no occasion. No, no occasion that you know of. Besides being hilarious, Ross Schaefer has a healthy skepticism toward the self-help industry, which makes for a totally fresh approach to motivation. That's why I wrote this book, Nobody Move Your Cheese. <laughs> when you ask the question, who moved my cheese? That's implying that somebody's in control of your life. But somebody has taken a thing that nourishes you and moved to some place that you can't get to it. And I don't believe that. I think that's seriously flawed. I think that you can be completely in charge of what direction you want to take. That's why the first chapter in my book lambasts some of these people. It's called Anthony Robbins Hasn't Done a Damn Thing. <laughs> Who is this guy? Do you know why he's famous? Because he bought commercials to tell you he was famous. But he's selling enthusiasm. It's enthusiasm, this guy. I tell you, he is so optimistic. If he ever went to jail, I'll bet he'd tell people he lived in a gated community. Well, I will say this about Tony. He's got the enthusiasm part right. Because energy and enthusiasm are absolutely critical to your success and the success of your organization. If you're not passionate, your clients and your customers won't think you're genuine about it. So ask yourself, what makes you enthusiastic? What fires you up? The clues usually lie in the magazines that you subscribe to or the things that you do on your days off. And the more you can tap into your avocation and then incorporate that into your work life, the more successful you're going to be. In fact, that's exactly how Bill Nye the Science Guy was created. I have a dubious honor of saying that I created Bill Nye the Science Guy. He was an aeronautical engineer at Boeing. That was his full-time job, and he would come in and write jokes and do sketches with us. One day, Geraldo Rivera cancels the show. That's a six-minute segment lost from our program. Now, six minutes of television is a lifetime. And we didn't have any more jokes, and the band couldn't play any more music. Uh, we didn't have any guests that we could get. An hour before showtime, we're panicking. I look across the table and I said, Bill, you're, you're an aeronautical engineer. Uh, we get a lab coat from the gardening department. We'll call you Bill Nye the Science Guy. Have you got anything, Bill? And he said, uh, let me see. I, got, I guess I could do something funny with liquid nitrogen. <laughs> An hour later, he appeared on the program, and I'm going to show you the clip from this. All right. And so he said, Bill, what could you do that would be science-like? Or well, it's just not that so much. I just realized how few people are using liquid nitrogen around the home. Yeah. <laughs> okay, liquid nitrogen tips, household tips. Household right. tips. Well, it's just we scientists. For example, uh -huh. here's an ordinary onion. Yeah. Okay, now how would you dice it? You'd use a cutting board, maybe a knife. Right. Yeah. Take you a few minutes, right? Okay. In the liquid <laughs> Into the liquid it goes. nitrogen. Doesn't take long. Right, let's say you figured out your strengths and you're looking for ways to exploit those at work. What do you do now? The most powerful step you and your organization can take is focus. Take your natural strengths and focus on learning all the tiny little details it takes for you to become an expert in your field. You see, that's why I think those Don't Sweat the Small Stuff books are dead wrong. We have got to sweat the small stuff or we're going to die. We're in the small stuff business, aren't we? The details really matter. You can't just, oh, well, I don't feel good. Oh, that's just too stressful. I don't want to do that. Come on. I met this Dr. Richard Carlson. I interviewed him twice on television, and he's just so syrupy and so sweet and nice. And, you know, shake his hand. It's unnaturally warm. You know those kind of people? <laughs> if you don't sweat the small stuff, you're going to end up buying that chicken soup for the unemployed soul book. <laughs> They've got even better news. If you're really great, your customers and your clients are going to help you accelerate your success. Good customer service will bankrupt you. <laughs> you, know, you know why I say this? 
because good ain't good enough anymore. We have been through. We have been through a very tough economy, and the people who did it, you know, okay, they kind of got by, they survived it, they're out of business now. The ones who are great are still moving forward. Now, the woman up here is Maria Garcia, and I'll tell you where I met her. I met her at the Orlando Marriott. She's room some. Uh, I got in there very late. I wanted to just get a, a Diet Coke and a hamburger about 11.30 at night. Sure enough, room service brings it up, and it's a Diet Pepsi. Now, I'm one of those fussy guys who likes, I mean, I can tell the difference between Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi. I prefer Diet Coke. I don't care what you put in it. <laughs> really, you know, they tell you, oh, put a lime in there. Oh, it'll taste just like Diet Coke. I put lime, I put cigarettes, I put buttons. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Nothing makes a difference. Okay. So I say, fine, I'll have the water. It's fine. Uh, the hamburger looks great. She leaves. Forty seconds later, she comes and knocks at my door with a nice cold Diet Coke in her hand. And I said, I thought you were out of those in room service. She goes, oh, well, we are, but I found this in the machine four floors down. I tried to pay for it. They wouldn't let me pay for it. It was a dollar. She said, no, we just want to make sure you're happy here. So I let my hamburger get ice cold, I'm telling you. I, I called her manager and talked this up. I wrote a letter to Marriott International. I put a chapter in my book about her. We put her in a training film. I have done everything except marry that woman. And then what happens is you don't have clients and customers anymore. You have relationships. And you know from experience, the stronger the relationship, the longer the loyalty. For instance, we design parking structures, hotels, office buildings, sports facilities, medical facilities. Each one of those is a market sector. Um, it, it's interesting because you hear the phrase over and over again that uh, a lot of firms say, well, peop our people are our most important asset. Actually, I look at it a little differently. Our relationships are our most important asset. If we look at our customers and we, we maintain an active database of 8,000 people that we consider our friends and contacts and they are so, so valuable. And these are all people that we have done a good job for in the past and they know us and they're inclined to use us again because anytime we're doing work, we're trying to do it in such a way that they want to hire us again for the next job. Okay, you know your talents, you're exploiting them, you're becoming an expert, and you're building loyal relationships. How do you stay motivated? I got the answer. The answer is somebody is watching you every minute you're alive. Your efforts are reflected in every single thing that you do and everything that you say. And you have the singular, singular power to change a person's life by the way you do things and by the encouragement that you give other people. And you know why I know that's true, is that every single person in here can think of a person's name on the top of their mind like that who changed your life. How cool would it be that we asked somebody else and it was your name that was on the top of their mind? Well, I hope by now you realize that nobody can move your cheese. Nobody can suppress your talents, your passions, your ambitions. You're completely in charge of being as successful as you want to be. And beyond that, each and every one of us has the opportunity to inspire and motivate other people just by our actions, which I think is a tremendous gift and a wonderful responsibility. Now, by showing genuine enthusiasm and passion for what you do, it'll give you credibility and your customers confidence. By incorporating your outside interests into your work life, you'll be surprised how far it advances your career. Focus on the details and become a valuable expert in your field. Surprise your customers. Be so amazing they can't wait to tell other people about you. Instead of just performing customer service, remember, the stronger the relationship, the longer the loyalty. We can all motivate and inspire other people by our actions. In fact, somebody is probably watching you right now.